In this video, I'm going over every console setting in detail so you can find out what's best for you. This is probably the most in-depth settings video you will find for console, so let's get into it. And starting with the first tab of settings, we have the general tab. The first thing you want to do is turn your display performance metrics to minimal metrics. As you can see, once I've turned my display performance metrics to minimal metrics, in the bottom left, you're going to see your ping, your FPS, and the game version. The reason you want this on is so you know when your ping or FPS is either high or low. If your FPS is dropping, you should know that. If your ping is high, you should know that. That's why I put this setting on minimal metrics. The next thing I'm going over is diffuser pickup. If you have this on automatic, then as soon as you walk over the diffuser, when it's dropped, you'll pick it up. If you have it on manual, you have to interact to pick up the diffuser. If you have it on both, it's going to pick up the diffuser as soon as you walk over it, but if you can't walk over it, you can interact to pick it up. So in my opinion, you should have it on both. The next setting you want to pay attention to is visible throw to trajectory. This just means anytime you throw something like an Azami barrier or a lesion mine, something like that, there's a trajectory predictor so you know exactly where whatever you're throwing is going to go. So in my opinion, you should put this on. It just makes things a lot easier and I don't see a reason as to why you would have this off, so in my opinion, keep it on. The setting right below that is drone after prep. If you have this on automatic, when the prep phase ends, you immediately get off your drone. Meaning if you were running your drone from a defender, it will take you off of the drone. You obviously don't want that because then the defender can just shoot your drone when you get off of it. If you have it on semi-automatic, if your drone is alive in prep phase, it's not going to take you off of your drone. But if your drone is broken, it will take you off. This is bad because if your teammate wants you to get on his drone, it's going to take you off. So I wouldn't use this setting, but it's not bad. And lastly, we have manual. This allows you to choose when you get off of your drone. So no matter what, you're in control. This is the setting I personally use. So that's what I recommend. The last setting I'll be going over in the general tab is match replay. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you turn it on, then replays will be saved after you play a game. If you turn it off, then they won't be saved. I keep this on because I watch my replays sometimes, but I think it does lower performance, especially if your console has cooling problems. So if your console is having cooling problems, if it's running hot, if it's loud, or if it's overheating, then I recommend turning this setting off. And moving on to the next tab, we have the HUD tab. The first setting that I like to change is I like to change my compass. You can either leave this off or you can leave it on with only one setting on, and that is current location. This is the way that I like to have it. You just have your compass on, you have simplified, and you have your current location on. Everything else just turn off in this uh, section here, and it's only going to show whatever room you're in, you know, nothing else extra. That's all you really need to know from your compass. The next thing that I do is I turn my loadout inputs off. This just removes the input icon next to your ability and stuff like that, like how to switch weapons and stuff like that, and you don't really need that, so I like to turn this setting off. The next thing I change is I change my health to number only. This just removes the bar underneath your health and just makes it look a little bit more cleaner. The next thing I change is my stance indicator. I turn this off. This just shows when you go crouched or prone and then when you stand back up. I turn this off because I don't see a point in it, but I guess if you want it on, then go ahead. The next thing that I change is action reminders to icons only. Instead of showing the icon, the interact button, and the text, it only shows the icon. This is good for me because I'm not looking for the text or the input. I just want to know when I can interact. So when the icon pops up, I know I can reinforce or when I can vault or when I I can barricade a door. And the next thing I do is I turn the action reminder opacity to 40%. This just makes it more out of the way, but you can still see it. The next thing I change is I turn general reminders off. As you can see, when it's on, it shows you how to go onto your cams and ping, but there's no need for that, so I turn it off. The next thing that I like to turn off is bans, and this is all the way down here, you just turn that off. This is just when someone gets banned, it pops up on your screen, and I don't really want that, so I turn it off. And the last thing that's worth changing in the HUD section, in my opinion, is score updates. As you can see, when I have score updates on, if I barricade this door, the points I gain pop up. The same goes if I reinforce or just anything like that that gains me points, it will pop up on my screen. This can be beneficial if someone walks into your Malusi trap or proximity alarm or something like that, because if you're too far to hear it, then you can just see your points pop up. I keep these on because I'm usually two or three stacking, so callouts aren't that active. I can just see my points pop up. And that's really all I think is worth changing in your HUD settings. So 
let's move on to the next tab and it's going to be the audio tab. Everything in audio is pretty much preference except for one setting, the dynamic range. By default, it's on hi-fi and I change it to night mode. Night mode is more compressed than hi-fi, meaning the loud sounds are quieter and the quiet sounds are louder. This is better because footsteps are louder and explosions are quieter, meaning you can hear more important things better. So in my opinion, you should be running night mode. And with that, let's move on to the next tab of settings and it's going to be the display settings. The first setting in display is VSync. Now VSync helps with screen tearing but increases latency, so unless you have bad screen tearing, and even then I don't think it's worth it, then it's best to turn it off. And the next setting is graphic mode. Prioritize performance caps your FPS at 120 and it lowers your graphic quality. Prioritize resolution, caps your FPS at 60 but maximizes your resolution. If you care about winning, then choose prioritize performance. It's going to greatly increase your skill. If you're playing on a TV or a 60 hertz monitor, then you could choose prioritize resolution, but even then I wouldn't. And with that, let's move on to the next setting and it's going to be field of view. I have my field of view on 90, but some people play 84, you know, 85, 87, whatever feels right to them. So in my opinion, you should just feel this out and find out what's best for you. But one thing to keep in mind, the lower your FOV, the easier it is to control recoil. So if that's something that you struggle with, then you should go lower. And another thing about FOV is I don't recommend going lower than 80. So try to stick between 80 and 90. And the next setting we have is HUD display area. The more you lower this setting, the more it's going to shrink your HUD closer to the middle of the screen. Now, if you think about it, this setting isn't too bad because it shrinks everything on your HUD. So everything on your HUD is smaller, but I don't like everything being closer to the middle of the screen because it distracts me more. But I do see why you would put this on. And the next setting we have is menu display area. This setting is going to shrink any menu. So the main menu, when you're selecting your operator, when you press pause, really any menu. It's not going to change a whole lot, but once again, I do see why you would use this, but it is personal preference at the end of the day. So whether you go 80 or 100, it's really up to you. And now we have the last setting in the display tab brightness now this one's pretty simple the higher your brightness the brighter the screen is going to get the lower your brightness the darker the screen gets so if you have a naturally bright monitor then you can lower the brightness if you have a naturally dark monitor then you can increase the brightness and yeah that's really all for the display settings let's move on to the next tab of settings the controls tab and to start it off the first thing you want to do is disable vibration and trigger effect the next setting we're going to be paying attention to is gadget deployment on standard gadget deployment you have to press R1 or RB on Xbox to pull out your gadget, then go to a wall, then let go of R1 or RB, and then it places down. Now with advanced gadget deployment on, you press R1 or RB on Xbox to pull out your gadget, then you hold down square or X on Xbox once you're up to a wall to place it down. It's really preference, but I like advanced, it's just one less step to do, but moving on to the next setting, it's going to be drone deployment. On standard drone deployment, as soon as you throw your drone, you open up your phone and you get on the drone. On advanced Advanced, when you throw your drone, you can still have your gun up and then you can get on your drone when you press down on the D-pad. Now, the reason why you have it on advanced is so you can drone bait by throwing your drone out and waiting for someone to swing. And just in any situation in general, I feel like it's better to have control if, if you want to go onto your drone or you want to have your gun up. So I keep it on advanced. The next setting we're going over is leaning behavior. On default, you can't hip lean. On alternate, you can hip lean. All you have to do to hip lean is when you aim down sights, all you have to do is lean and then un ADS and then you'll be leaning whichever way that you were trying to lean. I have it on alternate because I like hip leaning, but if you don't, then you can leave it on default. The next settings we're going over is controller layout and customized controller inputs. Controller layout allows you to choose from any of the preset button layouts. You can go through all of these to find out what you prefer, but in my opinion, default is best. Customized controller inputs allows you to change individual button inputs. So if you wanted to shoot with X, then you could. But once again, I think default is the best. The next thing is look inversion and look inversion just inverts up and down on your camera control. So if whatever reason you want that, then there you go. But now we're getting into the sensitivity part of the video. So I am going to be showing you my sensitivity, but I have made a video on how to find your perfect sensitivity. So that's popping up in the top right and it will be linked in the description. But getting into it, my controller rotation is on classic. If you don't know what controller rotation does on classic, 
music, it gradually speeds up your sensitivity until it reaches its cap. Updated is kind of the opposite. Instead of speeding up gradually, it stays the same speed throughout. Most players run classic, but I used to run updated, so if you want to run that, it's not bad. But my vertical sense is 29 and my horizontal sense is 69. I've been using this exact ratio of horizontal to vertical for literally like a year and a half and I think it's my perfect sensitivity. So if you wanna try it out, you can, but next thing we're gonna do is scroll down to controller ADS sensitivity. You can either play on standard or advanced, and I play on advanced. What standard is, is no matter what magnification site you're using, the ADS sense is the same. Advanced allows you to change individual magnification sensitivities, and the reason why you would run advanced over standard is, let's say you're using standard instead of advanced. If you use a 1X and then a 2.5X, if the 1X feels fine, then the 2.5x is going to feel a little bit slower because it's more zoomed in. So if you fine tune your advanced sensitivities, it's going to feel a lot better than standard. And once again, if you want to find your perfect sensitivity, watch the video popping up in the top right or go to the description. But my 1x sensitivity is 32 and my 2.5x is 47. And I'm pretty sure 5x and 12x are for glass and Kali. So if you use those operators, you can fine tune those. But me personally, I don't use anything but the 1x and the ACOG. And yeah, the next thing that I'm going over is the dead zones. The higher you have your dead zone, the more you have to move your stick before it detects your input. And the lower you have it, the less you have to move before it detects your input. So the lower you have your dead zone, the more responsive your movements are going to be. But keep in mind, if you put it too low, you will have stick drift, especially on an older controller. And the next thing is trigger dead zones. This is the same thing as the other dead zone, just instead of for your sticks, it's for your triggers. I keep mine on zero because I don't see a point in it taking longer to aim and shoot. So yeah, and the next setting is aim. It's pretty simple. If you have this on hold, you have to hold the ADS. If you have it on toggle, you have to tap to ADS. I don't really know why you would run toggle, but if you want to, you can. I'm going to be running hold. And the last setting in controls is advanced settings. I made a whole video dedicated to explaining every advanced setting. So that's popping up in the top right and in the description. Personally, I don't use advanced settings. I don't think they're that good compared to other games. So I don't recommend them. But if you do want to use them, then you can watch that video that I made and you know fine tune them down to what you like and with that let's move on to the last tab of settings the accessibility tab the first thing I'm going to be talking about is the optic color I run light blue but you could run whatever you want I wouldn't recommend black or white but some people do use those the next thing I want to talk about is optic opacity I have mine on 75 just so it doesn't stick out as much but you could put it on whatever I just wouldn't recommend going under 50% and the next setting is screen shake intensity if you turn this off any Anytime you blow something up or something like that, your screen isn't going to shake at all. So obviously you want screen shake off. And the last setting I'm going to be going over in the accessibility tab is your team color. Now you might be thinking, why would you want to change your team color? Well, some people say spotting gadgets that are shining blue is easier than spotting gadgets that are shining red. I haven't really tested this. So if you want to test that and you know, find out if you like it, then go ahead. Now me personally, I do keep mine default, but I do think having enemy team blue is better. If you enjoyed this video, click the video popping up on your screen to watch more of my content.